Welcome to Optimal Frequency. I'm Grant. Using a method I've developed, I talk to spirits here at my house using a source of white noise, usually the running faucet in my kitchen, and then take the film footage that I shoot, run that through an artificial intelligence, it removes the sound of the running water, and inside of that are hidden voices, spirits, that answer the questions I ask them. It's a crazy research field I'm into here. I've been doing this for three years now. Uh, I'm often ridiculed for the work I'm doing. If I go to post this anywhere on Reddit, I get all the time okay but i'm pushing forward the two guys i want to talk to or talk about also were ridiculed in their field in 1989 dr martin fleshman and dr stanley pons came out and somehow the moniker of cold fusion got attached to their work but what they were doing was experimenting with heavy water i don't know what their process was but somehow they were getting more energy out of the experiment than what they were putting into it cold fusion right crazy doesn't exist can't be done these guys were ridiculed big shivers down the arms um, to no end and there's a whole documentary that i watched i'm going to put the name on the screen for you i'm actually going to put a link inside the description here you can check out the whole documentary if you want because uh, i found it on youtube fascinating stuff okay one of the doctors dr martin fleshman has since passed I want to go to the sink using my crazy method, talk to him about cold fusion, how he was ridiculed, what he knew on earth, what he now knows, should we have this information, why was it kiboshed, and so forth. All these crazy questions, all right? Stay tuned. This should be super interesting. Do this. Good morning, Spirit Team. Thank you for joining me. I said my prayer of protection. You know who I asked to speak to. Can you please say his name now, please? Okay. Hopefully, Dr. Martin Fleshman come through. He was a chemist, I believe, working on cold fusion, which they announced back in 1989. Fusion takes place when the nuclei of two atoms, usually hydrogen, collide and fuse together, releasing vast amounts of energy. Prevailing theories suggest that this can only happen at extreme temperatures, like those found on the sun or in a nuclear blast. Experimental reactor facilities like the Jet Plasma Hot Fusion Site in England have attempted to replicate the fusion process of the sun for decades. Because current technology demands that more energy has to be put into a reaction than comes out, uh, it hasn't been economically viable. Uh, however, Stanley Pons of the University of Utah and Martin Fleischman of the University of Southampton claimed that they could create uh, a fusion reaction at room temperature and make fusion energy a reality uh, with the potential of making uncounted billions of energy dollars. So Dr. Fleshman, the experiments you conducted with Dr. Pons, were they valid in the fact that they produced excess heat? <laughs> Were the two of you 
on the right track with your experiments. And if you want to come through this box over here and make some words out of that, that would be great too. The naysayers that attacked you, was that mostly about finding, uh, sorry, funding? Okay, the hat shack went off. Let me repeat the question. The naysayers that attacked you, was that mostly about funding and the money they would lose? Should the world have technology like cold fusion and should it be free for the people? Since Pons and Fleischmann were both well aware of the pitfalls of premature publicity, why would they bypass the accepted conventions of the peer review system and announce their discovery through the media? I was thinking these guys are not no fool. They know what they're doing. These are good scientists. Prior to the 1989 announcement, Stephen E. Jones, a physics professor at nearby Brigham Young University, learned of Pons and Fleischmann's work through an informant at the DOE. In a flagrant example of shameless opportunism, Jones insisted on going public quickly with his comparatively much less clear results. Disparaging the excess heat claims of Fleischmann and Pons, Jones' announcement would have effectively prevented the two scientists from patenting their process, a process they had developed on their own over long years of research. On the advice of university attorneys, Pons and Fleischmann, feeling their backs to the wall, reluctantly delivered their work to public scrutiny. What do you think of Stephen E. Jones for forcing your hand in the premature release of your research? Was your research conducted properly and in the pursuit of truth and resources for humankind? How could you have bettered your results without huge monetary input? Do you wish you had perfected cold fusion before releasing your data? Massachusetts Institute of Technology was one of the testing facilities selected by the Department of Energy. MIT's hot fusion director, Professor Ronald R. Parker, fired the next salvo. On the front page of the Boston Herald, Parker accused Fleischmann and Pons of possible fraud and of engaging in scientific schlock. It was a well-timed directive to the American Physical Society to go on the attack against cold fusion. Princeton's Professor William Happer, a hot fusion veteran and advisor to Secretary Watkins, was quoted as saying, just by looking at Fleischmann and Pons on television, you could tell they were incompetent boobs. Why do you think you and Dr. Pons were so heavily criticized? <laughs> Was that criticism warranted? Was that criticism warranted? Was that criticism warranted? When William Pepper said that you and Dr. Pons looked like... Like... 
Like, like. When William Heffer said that you and Dr. Collins looked like incompetent boobs, how did that make you feel? <laughs> Will we ever have a clean source of renewable energy here on Earth? If so, when? Despite the nasty accusations made against cold fusion, Accomplished scientists like Dr. Bob Bush and Dr. Edmund Storms of the Los Alamos Laboratory continued their leading edge work, often producing extraordinary results. We were seeing this, this marvelous effect of excess power and, and integrated over time excess heat in our own laboratory. So it wasn't as if we had to take somebody else's word for it. We had, we had proved it. The conclusion was that the amount of palladium that you could fit on your thumb would be enough to produce a reactor that would supply the city of Los Angeles with all their power needs. Sociologists of science have said that if you get four big names in a field of science to stand up and say that something isn't so, that uh, unfortunately all of the other people tend to fall into a line kind of herd-like. Section four. <laughs> What is the missing step in your research that can propel other labs following in your footsteps to success? Do you want to see someone break through using your previous work? Are you now a scientist wherever it is that you are? Data should be published in the most reputable of scientific journals. It should not be published first in the newspapers, it should not be disseminated through the popular media until, in fact, the information can be replicated. Officials at the University of Utah were chastised for their haste in publicizing the discovery through the media. There's a hypothesis, an idea. The idea is tested in, in the laboratory. Uh, it's written up in a journal. It undergoes peer review, which means people, experts in the field, look at that information. They test its validity. They ask questions about its validity. Then it's published in the journal. Then, of course, the scientific uh, community reads it. Then the scientific community tries to test the pro Can they repeat this experiment? What a bunch of garbage, okay, in my opinion. Do you think two cavemen sitting in the cave, one turns to the other and he says, hey man, I discovered that if I rub these two sticks together, I can make fire. Do you think the other guy looked at him and said, hey man, have you been peer evaluated? I don't think so. In your opinion, is it greed that stops us from moving forward as a people? What do you think of the peer evaluation system they explained in the video I showed the people here? Should great discoveries that help humankind be available to all humankind? Do spirits treat each other better than humans? Dr. Fleshman, do you have a message for us here on Earth right now?
All right, thank you, Dr. Fleshman. Thank you, Spirit Team. I'm going to send out some light. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Love, peace, joy, and adventure to you. We'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you joining us on the channel. If you'd like to donate like these fine people in the list here, uh, there's a link in every description of every video to do so. Up in the top right hand corner of the YouTube page, there's also a little button there as well. Your donations keep me driving forward. I super appreciate it. They really help me out. You guys have been a big help in pushing me forward and furthering this research. So thank you to you all. Love, peace, joy, and adventure to all of you. We'll catch you all in the next video.